part two of the roadway culvert exercise. And what we will talk about in this video is the compute center, how to do an analysis or a design, which are two different scenarios. We will talk about the flex tables, and then we will also talk about the profile runs that you can create to visually see the water going through your pipes or your drainage network. So to get to your compute center, we will go underneath the drainage and utilities workflow and we will go to the analysis tab. And inside of here, we will go ahead and select the compute center. Now with your compute center, you're gonna have some different scenarios that you can run. And if you click on the down arrow, you're gonna see all these scenarios that you have and they're broken out by districts and they're broken out by the year of the storm event. But then also you're going to see that you have an analysis and then you have a design. These two things do two separate things and this is important. If you run an analysis, basically what it's going to do is just take what you have for your flared in sections and your pipes and the sizes, everything that you put in and it runs an analysis of just what you have so it won't change anything that you have for your drainage items. Now you can always go back in there and adjust them later, but that's what the analysis will do. Now with the options of design, what that will do is take what you have and then the program will go through there and actually change those sizes of the pipes and stuff like that and make it to what it thinks it should be. So if you have a pipe that's really oversized for the water that's going into it, it'll actually take the pipe and make it smaller. So if it was a 72 inch pipe, but it really only needed to be a 36 inch pipe, it would size those down. So that's what the design option will do. And we'll talk about both of those here in a second. So for this example here, we're gonna select the one that says CD, which stands for Central District, Base Analysis, 50 Year Storm Event. And it'll go through there and copy out what it needs for that. And basically it's using those IEF curves that are in drainage to get the proper rainfall intensities and stuff like that for it. Now to get the proper storm event, you can always look in the EPG section 640.1 pavement drainage and 748.2 roadway design criteria. And it will give you the information for what storm event that you should calculate for the different type of structure it is, whether it's a pavement drainage with inlets, that'd probably be a different storm event versus a roadway culvert where it may be a 25 year event or a 50 year event. So that's the section that you'd look at for determining which storm event that you would use. So now if we go back to the compute center, since we have the scenario that we want to run, all we simply need to do is click on this compute button. And it'll go through the calculations and once it's finished, if it has enough information for it to process, you will get this right here that says convergence was achieved. And since we basically have two drainage networks, so to speak, on this one here, we have this culvert here and we have another culvert on the other side, you're going to get two summaries of those right there. So that looks good. Everything computed the way it should have. Now once that's finished, if we go into the details of it, which is this little button right here, this is where we can look at and see the summary of our drainage network that we have. So you can go to the calculation options, you can look at the catchment summary, see how much water is going through it, the link summary, the node and stuff like that. So you can go through there and look at a summary of what's going on with your drainage networks or your culverts for this example to see what's going on. That's just one way to look at some of those items. I will go ahead and close those out. You can always get back to that summaries box by clicking on this little button right here that is calculation summary and it'll look at the last time that you ran that network. So that's actually using the compute center using the analysis. It looks at what you have, analyzes it, if it has enough information it's going to do what it should do for the calculations of it. We'll come back to the design option here a little bit later in this video. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the flex tables, which that's just another way to look at the summary for your drainage networks that you have. 
So if we go to the flex tables, which is this button right here, and underneath here, we will go to the one that says hydraulic analysis. And inside that tab, underneath the tables shared, you're going to see some different reports that we've created. And you can go to these right here and go to like the conduit report and view and see what's going on with your drainage network. So you can look at those options through there. So that's just another way you can look at those reports and so forth. Now, the thing with the flex tables, and this is an option, with these areas that are in white, these are the areas that you can edit. If they're in yellow, you can't edit those numbers. But if for some reason you want this to be a different elevation for your invert, you could actually change those numbers right here and it would reflect in your design. Now keep in mind that you'd have to also change your ground elevation because that difference for your flared in section would need to be whatever size it is so you may have to change both of those or if it's a different type you could always come in here and change your inlet descriptions and stuff like that so anything that is in white you can change it inside of here and it would reflect in your design but that's some of the reports that are out there if you wish to look at those here's the base report for it and all the other reports that are out there so those are just some of the flex tables that are set up that you can review. The next thing that we're going to do is show you how to create a profile run, which allows you to visually see the water going through your drainage network. And basically each one of these culverts right here is treated as a drainage network. Even though it is just two flared in sections and a pipe, that is what they call a drainage network. If you had two nodes right here, which would be this flared in section here and this flared in section here, those are called nodes, and then the pipe connecting them. Or if you have roadway with 20 inlets on it, that's all tied together, that would be considered a network also. So to get back to the profile runs, if we go to the layout tab, underneath here you will have your profile runs that you can select from. And what we will basically do is select this one that says hydraulic runs to outfall. So go ahead and select it. Here you have your profile run direction. Up to down or down to up. We will go up to down. Basically going in the direction of flow. And we will look at this one right here. Which is the 5x4 box. Let's go ahead and change our feature definition from baseline existing. I'll go to linear, design, miscellaneous, and there's a drainage profile run feature definition that you could select. If you want to give it the name, you can. I will just say box culvert for this one. And if I knew what station it was, I could probably put the station also, but I'll just name this one box culvert. Select your outfall, which my outfall is right here. It'll look at all the nodes that are connected to it. And if you want to accept that, simply just left click to accept it. And it created that run. I will also do the same thing for this culvert that we have on the other side. And I know my water is going from here down this direction. So this would be my outfall right here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. I will name this one Culvert. Select my outfall. Accept however many nodes that are connected to it. And now I have that one created. Now to actually visualize those, let's go to the Explorer. And let's go to the Drainage and Utilities option here. Then we will go ahead and expand this out. And at the bottom you have some profile runs. Go ahead and expand those out. And then on this one here, we see that it didn't name it, but we can always go back in there and rename those. So that's not a big issue with that. But now if we come in here and right click over one of these, you'll have some different options that you can look at. You have a profile model, you have open analysis profile, and open engineering profile. For this one here, we will do the 
open analysis profile. So go ahead and select it. And now you'll see the water going through that box. So it looks like the box may be a little bit oversized, but you can see that the water is efficiently going through that particular box for this storm event that you are designing it for. We can do the same thing for that circular culvert right here, which is this one right here. Do the analysis profile with it, and you got the same thing. So you know the water can efficiently go through that pipe. We may need to size those up or down, and we'll kind of talk about those options in video number three and how to change your pipe size and stuff like that. So that's doing the profile runs. And you have some other options underneath here, but we're just going to explain this one for this example since that's the easiest for doing a culvert. The last thing that I will talk about is the design scenario. With the design scenario, this will allow you to actually take what you have and it'll look at everything that's set up for your design constraints. Like if I go back underneath the analysis, if you look at your design constraints that are right here, It'll look at all these parameters that are set up for your slopes and your cover and your velocity, your minimum and maximum. Look at all those numbers and try to design your pipes to what the program thinks it should be. So if your pipe is oversized, it's going to make it smaller, but still make it efficiently go through that particular culvert. Now, whenever I do this, I would suggest to save this file like the way you have it right now and then go in and create a separate file that way you don't mess up anything that you have in this file because it whenever it goes through there and does a design scenario it may change some stuff that you don't want it to change so that's just a word of caution or a word of warning whenever you're doing a design scenario so what I will do is go ahead and save this and I'll do an update server copy And then we will demonstrate how to do a design scenario. So now let's go ahead and do a file save as. And I will just name this one with an underscore DS for design scenario. So now since we're in the newly created file, if we go back to the Compute Center, and this time instead of doing a base analysis 50 year event, let's go ahead and select the base design 50 year storm event. And it loads up everything that it needs for that. And now if I go ahead and run the compute, you will get this box that says this design calculations may modify your physical properties. Would you like to create an alternate? I'm going to do a no on that since we did create a separate file for it. And that's what my suggestion would be if you're running a design scenario. And you see that the convergence was achieved. So we're okay there. So let's close that out. Let's close this out. And now let's go ahead and actually look at this pipe. If you remember before, this was a 60 inch pipe. But now if we go to the properties of it, it still says it's 60 inch. And now if we go back to our utility properties of it, you'll see that it's a 36 inch pipe. So this is where we'd have to come in here and adjust each one of those pipes accordingly. So that's why I really don't like to do the design scenario except to see what the program thinks it should do because there's a lot of stuff that you'll have to go back in and change. You will also have to go back in here since right now hydraulically for this particular pipe it thinks it's a 36 inch pipe but if you go to the physical properties of it it still thinks that it's a 60 inch. So you'd have to go back and double check all those. So that can be kind of a, a nuisance for that. Plus, your flared in sections are still going to be a 60 inch flared in section that you originally created, as you can see right here for this feature definition. Let's go ahead and review the box. Let me just go to the hydraulic properties of it. 
and you can see that it made it a smaller box. It made a 3x4 versus a 5x4 or whatever des design pipe that we put in there originally. But if we come into the properties of it, it still thinks it's a 5x4. So physically looking at it, it's going to look like it's a 5x4. But hydraulically speaking, it's looking at this number now. So that's just something that you'd have to consider if you're doing a design scenario. You'd have to go back and double check each one of those and adjust those accordingly. And the same thing with the nodes. And we'll talk about some of that stuff whenever we go over the modifying of your culverts in part three video. So in review, that is the options of using the compute center to either do an analysis or a design to view your computations for the drainage items that you've placed out there. We talked about the flex tables to review what you have also and options where you can modify it in your flex tables. And then of course your profile runs, you can view that visually with your profile runs that you've created, visually see the water going through it. If we look at that profile runs now, since we're in a different file and it changed the size of those culverts, if I do an analysis profile on each one of these, you're going to see that there's more water filling those particular culverts. But it's still efficiently getting through that culvert with that design event. So that's the part two video of the computations, the flex tables, and also the profile runs on how to create those.